am i audible yes you are audible a very good good evening to all of you uh, myself dr preeti singh solanki dm first year resident my moderator is dr anita ma'am uh, additional professor uh, from department of neonatology neonatology sgpj lucknow uh my topic for today's session is peritoneal dialysis in neonatal acute kidney injury so learning objective for today's sessions are indications of renal replacement therapy peritoneal dialysis technique principle of peritoneal dialysis peritoneal dialysis catheters as well as peritoneal dialysis solutions peritoneal dialysis methods which which may be of two types manual and automatic and complications of peritoneal dialysis which include infectious as well as non infectious complications uh, renal replacement therapy is used for uh, maintaining function of a failing kidney when medical management fails to do so so there may be indications in acute kidney injury as well as some non renal indications in acute kidney injury renal replacement therapy is indicated in oliguria or anuria in case of persistent hyperkalemia when medical management fail uh, renal replacement therapy is indicated renal replacement therapy is also indicated in severe metabolic acidosis unresponsive to medical treatment in case of severe hyperphosphatemia when accompanied with hypocalcemia also rrt is indicated in uremic encephalopathy when it is associated with neurological symptoms like altered mental state or seizures non renal indications of renal replacement therapy include uh, in uh, poisonings as well as inborn error of metabolism for removal of toxins it is also indicated in prevention or treatment of tumor lysis syndrome in various cancers uh rrt is also indicated in uh, providing adequate nutrition to the uh, baby if uh, fluid restriction is required as, as in case of acute kidney injury now uh, coming to renal replacement therapy these are basically of three uh, types first image shows peritoneal dialysis second hemodialysis third continuous renal replacement therapy among these peritoneal dialysis is most preferred form of rrt in neonate uh this slide shows advantages and disadvantages of different dialysis modalities so uh, the main advantage of peritoneal dialysis there is no need of vascular access or blood priming and there is lesser risk of hemodynamic instability the main disadvantage is that it is contraindicated in patients who have severe pulmonary disease and intra abdominal processes uh in hemodialysis advantage is of rapid correction of metabolic abnormalities while main disadvantage is requirement of vascular access and there is increased risk of hemodynamic instability now uh, before uh, proceeding with the discussion of peritoneal dialysis uh, i will be showing a short uh, video of peritoneal dialysis technique so instruments required for peritoneal dialysis from left to right are sterile gown then uro bag then pd catheter with trocar then sterile gauze kidney tray and pediatric burette and then spinal tube so i i will be continuing with the peritoneal dialysis uh, catheter insertion as well as the uh, technique so uh, before uh, progressing with the uh, peritoneal dialysis catheter insertion first we have to empty hello am i audible yes you are audible so please continue ah uh, first we have to clean and drape the abdomen of the baby in the supine position and uh, before that we have to empty the bladder With, uh, through catheterization of the bladder to avoid bladder trauma while inserting peritoneal dialysis catheter after cleaning and wrapping we will move on uh, to the insertion of peritoneal dialysis catheter in most centers we are using stiff peritoneal dialysis catheter uh, but if it is required for more than 48 to 72 hours then we have to use soft or tank of catheter for insertion because uh, using stiff catheter may increase the risk of infection uh for uh, ca pd catheter placement first we have to uh, take appropriate size of pd catheter this can be modified as per the neonatal size 
and for uh, measuring the uh, depth of PD catheter insertion, we have to approximate the distance between the umbilicus and the anterior superior iliac spine, and then we have to adjust the guard of the uh, PD catheter. After determining the length and depth of PD insertion, we have to infiltrate the uh, site uh, in which PD uh, catheter uh, insertion is to be done. Uh, the most common site we are using uh, for PD catheter insertion is just below the umbilicus in the midline. We can also use left lower uh, uh, quadrant of abdomen as well as right lower quadrant of abdomen for PD catheter insertion. After infiltrating the skin uh, with local anesthesia, we have to create a fluid filled reservoir in the peritoneal cavity using 22 gauge cannula. Uh, we have to insert 22 gauge cannula just below the umbilicus in the midline. And then uh, we have to instill 20 to 30 ml per kg of into the peritoneal cavity. After instilling the fluid, we have to dip the camera and then we have to place the nick just below the umbilicus, the midline, using the pink gauze sterile Then uh, we will move on to uh, the main uh, portion of accessing peritoneal cavity that is inserting PD catheter with the help of the other pa pa person using boring technique. And the insertion of PD catheter into the peritoneal cavity uh, will be indicated by the uh, giveaway of resistance and gush of peritone uh, dilated fluid into the catheter. Then we have to connect the inflow and outflow circuit through the PD catheter. Uh, the outflow circuit is created using a triway, and one port of triway is connected to the euro bag through the 2 ml syringe. Then uh, we have to attach the inflow circuit using pediatric burret and uh, the end of the uh, drip set is connected to the other port of the triway. So the outflow track consists of PD catheter and triway and the euro bag and the inflow track consists of pediatric burret and, uh, and the drip set and the other port of the triway. Now we, uh, we will proceed for the uh, first cycle of peritoneal dialysis. Uh, we have to open the inflow circuit by uh, opening the uh, one, uh, opening the inflow track port of the triway and we have to instill the required amount of the fill volume into the peritoneal cavity. Uh, it takes about 5 to 10 minutes of the fill time and then we have to open the other port of the inflow tract after dwell time of approximate 20 to 30 minutes. And uh, uh, the correct position of the uh, PD catheter will be confirmed by the egress of the uh, dialysate fluid into the outflow tract. And this completes the one cycle of the peritoneal dialysis. So. Now, coming to the mechanism of peritoneal dialysis, in the peritoneal uh, dialysis, nitrogenous waste products are removed using peritoneal membrane and mechanism involved are first uh, for fluid removal, ultrafiltration is done and blood chemistries of balance are restored with the help of diffusion and waste products are filtered through diffusion also called as dialysis and all these requires peritoneal dialysis fluid called as dialysate. Uh, this slide deals with the first mechanism that is osmosis in which ultrafiltration is done for fluid removal. Osmosis is the movement of solvent from uh, the uh, higher uh, from the higher uh, solute concern, uh, from the uh, lower solute concentration to higher solute concentration. And in diffusion, there is a movement of molecule uh, like electrolytes, toxins from their higher concentration gradient to lower concentration gradient. This slide shows the Peri uh, peritoneal uh, dialysis mechanism in which uh, so solute transport uh, occurs. Peritoneal uh, membrane consists of peritoneal capillaries. In peritoneal capillary endothelium, there are many three types of pores. Ultra pores are the smallest pore, uh, which have size less than four uh, angstrom. 
and uh, about 40% of water uh, transport occurs through these pores and uh, small pores uh, maximum of solvent as well as solute transport occurs through small pores uh, small uh, uh, molecules consist of urea and creatinine and uh, about 1 to 10 uh, 1 to 2 percent of the peritoneal endothelium capillaries consist of large pores through which macromolecules like beta 2 microglobulin and albumin are transported this slide uh, deals with the this slide uh, deals with the molecular removal in peritoneal dialysis. In x-axis, dwell time is plotted in minutes, while in, x, uh, while in y axis dialysate to plasma concentration of a various molecule is pl plotted. And it can be seen from uh, the graph that within 60 to 120 minutes of dwell time, removal of urea and creatinine occurs in maximum amount, while uh, molecules like inulin are, and proteins are not removed even after uh, maximum uh, dwell time. So uh, this is an advantage as in peritoneal dialysis we require a uh, removal of urea and creatinine uh, only as a major molecule. Now uh, coming to the uh, parameters which are set up in peritoneal uh, dialysis. So uh, uh, first parameter is fill volume which is the volume of dialysate to be installed in the peritoneal cavity for ultra filtration as well as solute uh, removal. Its value is approximate 20 to 30 ml per kg but all these parameters can be modified according to the clinical and biochemical parameters of the neonate. And then uh, second parameter is fill time, the uh, time required for the dialysate fluid to uh, get filled in the peritoneal cavity. This is kept initially at 5 to 10 minutes. Then dwell time uh, which is the uh, time required for the uh, dialysate fluid to be uh, kept in the peritoneal cavity. This is set as approximate 20 to 30 minutes, but it can be modified as already said according to the clinical status of the baby. Then drain, drain time, uh, that is the time required for the egress of the uh, dialysate fluid into the outflow tract. This, uh, this is kept as uh, uh, approx 10 minutes and the total cycle time is of 60 minutes. Then uh, coming to the ultrafiltration, that is uh, fluid removal. Ultrafiltration is the net amount of water removed and is calculated as a volume removed minus fill volume. We have to establish tables to log all volumes. The uh, table shows the cycle time and the PD input in ML and the PD output in ML. And the balance is calculated as PD input mi minus PD output. Uh, what are the factors affecting ultrafiltration? That is the fluid uh, removal. Excessive fluid is uh, removed as we increase the dextrose concentration from 1.5 to 2.5 and then to 4.5%. But uh, this should be kept in mind that uh, the neonatal peritoneal membrane is a high transport membrane. That is, if we increase the dextrose concentration of PD fluid beyond 4.5%, these dextrose will get diffused into the peritoneal capillaries and thus decreasing the osmotic gradient and uh, decreasing the ultrafiltration. Uh, second, if we increase the fill volume of the di uh, peritoneal dialysis fluid, it will increase fluid removal. Also, if the uh, duration of total dialysis is increased, this will uh, cause increased fluid removal. Uh, ultrafiltration also increased if we increase the number of dialysis cycles. Coming to factors affecting molecular removal. Molecular removal is increased if, in, if we increase dwell time, drain time, as well as fill volume. And it, been, it has been given in many studies that increasing temperature of dialysate from 20 degrees centigrade to 37 degrees centigrade increases solute clearance by 30 to 35 percent. So we have to use warm dialysate fluid for peritoneal dialysis. Now coming to the uh, peritoneal dialysis catheters. As in many centers, uh, the neonatal PD catheters are not available. So we have to modify the uh, PD catheter available in, uh, for pediatric uh, to be used in neonate. Different sizes of uh, PD catheters can be trimmed for neonate. Uh, for this, we just have to keep in mind that the distal penetrated segment should be less than equal to 2 cm and the total length of the PD catheter should be 10 cm of which 5 cm approx remain intra-abdominal. Uh, as already mentioned in the video, that is uh, in many centers, we are using stiff uh, PD catheter for acute peritoneal dialysis, but soft PD catheter can also be used for acute PD. But if, if PD is required for more than 48 to 72 hours, uh, for, uh, so for decreasing the risk of infection, we have to use soft tank of catheter along with tunneling. And in this, we have to keep exit site outside diaper area to decrease infection rate. Coming to the types of PD catheters. So uh, first uh, image shows stiff catheters uh, along with connecting tube and blade. Second image shows tank of catheter. Uh, its, its length is about 11 centimeters from proximal cup to catheter tip. And uh, it is most commonly used catheter in Western setting, but India, uh, 
stip catheters are used in many uh, centers so uh, first is double cuff tank of catheter and the image shows single cuff tank of catheter uh, these are the various modifications of tank of catheter a is straight tank of catheter b various types of single cuff double cuff two cuff disc bead uh, catheter third is extended swan neck catheter so uh, swan neck catheters have lower ra rates of exit site or tunnel infections compared with straight catheters. Also curled catheters are available which have advantage of decreased inflow pain, less catheter migration as well as less bowel trauma. Now, as uh, in, in, all, in many centers, uh, PD catheters are not available. So we have to uh, use indigenous catheters. So uh, these are the uh, examples of catheter which we can use as uh, PD catheters. First is femoral venous catheter of 14 gauze size. Second image is of Cook 5 French, which is an angiographic catheter. This can also be used as PD catheter. Third is angiocath. Fourth, a suction catheter tip. Uh, fifth, a neonatal chest strain. Sixth, IV cannula we are using as a PD catheter. And a seventh is AT tube, uh, which can also be used as indigenous PD catheter. So this slide, uh, the first image uh, shows a surgical uh, tank of catheter. And the second image uh, shows an insertion of endotracheal tube as indigenous catheter, which we use in our center. Uh, this uh, article reviewed use of 14 gauge gastric tube uh, as well as neonatal PD catheter and 12 gauge urethral catheter and all uh, these ca indigenous catheters were effective in peritoneal dialysis. In this article, uh, they used IV 22 gauge cannula in units with extremely low body weight and uh, this was also effective in uh, dialysis. Now coming to the access uh, site of peritoneal dialysis, first image shows the right lower abdominal quadrant. Second image uh, shows the most common uh, used access site for PD catheter insertion that is just below the umbilicus in the midline. And third image shows uh, um, uh, PD catheter placed in left lower abdominal quadrant. Uh, but in this uh, study, it was an exceptional case. In this, uh, PD catheter was placed in left upper quadrant in an extremely low birth weight infant with acute kidney injury. Uh, this slide uh, shows uh, PD fluid or dialysate, uh, which is commercially available. These are of three types mainly. Uh, first is regular calcium, regular magnesium. Second, regular calcium, low magnesium. Third, low calcium, low magnesium. All these uh, dialysis solution is available in three pre-mixed dextrose concentrations of 1.25%, 2.5% and 4.25%, which we can use according to the clinical and biochemical parameters of the neonate. Uh, this image shows uh, the uh, commercially available uh, peritoneal dialysis uh, solution with 1.5% dextrose of Baxter. Now, uh, modifications of the peritoneal dialysis prescriptions. As already mentioned, uh, PD uh, fluid and uh, various uh, parameters can be modified according to the clinical and biochemical parameters of the baby. So, uh, first param uh, so first condition is fluid overload. If uh, we want to uh, make more ultra filtrate and uh, we have to uh, we have to uh, cause more uh, fluid removal, then we have to use higher gradient PD fluid with 2.5 percent or 4.25 percent solution. And this can be prepared by adding 25 ml of 50% dextrose to 1 liter of 1.5% PD fluid. Also, uh, for a more uh, ultrafiltration, well time can be increased with increased number of cycles and increased duration of dialysis. Now, coming to the hypokalemia, if pre-dialysis serum uh, potassium is more than 6 mg per liter, then there is no need of addition of KCL. But if serum uh, potassium is in between 4 to 6 mg per liter, we have to add KCL 2 mg per liter of dialysis fluid and if serum potassium is less than 4 mg per liter we have to add 4 mg per liter of KCL. Uh, in case of hemorrhagic in effluent we have to add 50 to 500 unit of heparin per liter of dialysate. In case of uh, solute removal as required in hyperammonemia, hyperlectotemia, uremia, toxins and poisoning, we can increase dwell time for more solute removal. If the neonate is having liver failure, asphyxia, hyperlectotemia or hemodynamic instability, then we have to use lactate-free bicarbonate PD fluid. This can be made as follows. We have to prepare sol solution A by mixing 440 ml of 5% dextrose with 60 ml of soda bicarb and solution B, solution B is 500 ml of NS. Uh, and this uh, one third and the solution for lactate free bicarbonate PD fluid can be prepared by adding one third of solution A along with uh, two thirds of solution B. 
in case of hypernatremia we have to increase dwell time and we have to lower glucose concentration of dialysate uh, if uh, baby is having hyperglycemia uh, if we are using 2.5% or 4.25% dextrose dialysate then uh, we can do a uh, mixing of equal volumes of 1.5% and 2.5% dextrose uh, pd solution and if it is not corrected even by mixing these uh, solution then uh, we can add insulin uh, the dose is 4.5 4 to 5 units per liter for 1.5% PD solution, 5 to 7 units per liter for 2.5% PD solution, and 7 to 10 units per liter for 4.25% PD solutions. Uh, there is uh, the supplemental calcium should never be given through PD solution as it can get precipitated. If baby is having hypernatremia with acute kidney injury, we have to add 3% or 5% hypertonic sodium to within 50 millimole of patient serum sodium for gradual reduction of serum sodium. Otherwise, it can lead to uh, dreaded complications of severe hyponatremia. Mm -hmm. As a PD, uh, uh, commercially available PD fluids are not available in many centers, so we can prepare our indigenous PD fluid using this uh, mixing uh, volumes. Uh, we have to take 35 ml of 8.4% soda bicarb, which is mixed with 300 ml of dextrose, 5% dextrose, with uh, 649 ml of 0.9% NS, with 14 ml of distilled water, along with 1.8 ml of 10% magnesium sulfate. This prepares 1 liter of PD fluid with dextrose 1.5% concentration, sodium 135 fluoride 100, bicarb 35, magnesium 1.5 and sulfate 1.5 milliequivalent per liter. Now, uh, coming to the modalities of peritoneal dialysis. So, these are of two types mainly. First is manual PD, uh, which was shown in the uh, video. It is reliant on gravity, simple uh, performance, limited cost of equipment, capability to administer extremely low pill volume. It can be used in even very preterm in uh, newborn, and, but it is labor intensive. In case of automated PD, we are using automated peritoneal dialysis machine called a cycler. In, this has the advantage of decreased need for constant monitoring, shortened pill or drain times, and decreased rate of peritonitis. But the main disadvantage is decreased ability to perform at pill volumes less than 60 to 100 ml. Uh, this uh, slide shows the image of automated peritoneal dialysis machine, which is called a cycler. There are limited uh, studies in which uh, automated machine was used in infants. Uh, this study was published in 2011 in which um, the experience of the uh, pediatric chronic uh, dialysis was done. In this, uh, they presented that data on 84 neonates, 84 infants who started chronic peritoneal dialysis at less than one year of age. Median age at the start of chronic peritoneal dialysis was 6.9 months, weight was 6.1 kg and length was 63.6 cm. In this continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis was initially applied when the fill volume was less than 100 ml. But if uh, when the fill volume reached uh, more than 100 ml, uh, when the weight of the baby increased, they used automated cycler PD regimens. And it was concluded that growth was acceptable and a large proportion was successfully transplanted after chronic peritoneal dialysis. Now, what, uh, what all we, are, we have to write before uh, starting a PD, which is called as PD prescription. First, we have to write dialysate composition required along with additives. Then we have to write exchange volume, uh, which is approximate 20 to 30 ml per kg. But all these parameters needs to be uh, changed according to the uh, clinical and biochemical parameters of the neonate. Inflow time and outflow time generally kept in between 5 to 10 minutes. Then dwell time, which is kept in between 30 to 45 minutes. Then frequency and duration of exchange. Initially, orally exchange for 24 hours per day is done, followed by 8 to 15 hours per day after volume increased over weeks. Uh, we, have all, we also have to maintain a monitoring of patient's vitals, fluid intake output, and peritoneal dialysis fluid for signs of peritonitis. Uh, this is the chart we are using in our institute. In this, we have to mention patient name, a registration number, date, and day of peritoneal dialysis. There are many columns. Uh, first column is serial number, then in time, then in volume, then well time, followed by out time, then out volume, and total balance we have to calculate, uh, subtracting in volume and out volume. Uh, now, coming to the nutritional requirement in the uh, baby undergoing peritoneal dialysis, goal is to uh, provide 100 to 140 kilocalorie uh, per kg per day. Uh, and uh, patient on uh, peritoneal dialysis receive 20% calories from absorbed dextrose or dialysate. Protein intake of 2.2 to 2.5 gram per kg per day is required in view of loss of protein and dialysate. 
formulas low in phosphorus and potassium are chosen. Nearly all patients on peritoneal dialysis need nasogastric and or jejunostomic feedings. Vitamins and mineral supplementation should be done regularly. Uh, also, uh, baby might have hyponatremia because of excessive, uh, excessive uh, sodium loss. So, sodium should be added in feeding. Soda bicarb supplementation may also be required because of bicarb loss in the in the outflow uh, tract, in case of hypophosphatemia, sodium phosphate may be added. Albumin infusion may be required to maintain serum albumin in the range of 2.5 to 3 gram per DL. Carnitine supplementation may also be needed in some cases. Now, what are the monitoring uh, parameters we have to do uh, before, during and after peritoneal dialysis? We have to continuously monitor vital signs like pulse, respiration, blood pressure, saturation and temperature. 8 to 12 hourly uh, monitoring of fluid input and output. Weight charting should be done 12 to 24 hourly. Continuous central venous pressure monitoring should be done. Blood sugar monitoring 4 to 6 hourly uh, or as per the glycemic status of the baby, serum urea, electrolytes, creatinine and calcium 12 hourly monitoring should be done and CBC can be done once daily. Now coming to the complications of peritoneal dialysis. First complication is peritoneal dialysis catheter leak, which can be confirmed with glucose dip sticker and we have to look for local swelling or edema. Uh, for uh, This can be corrected by discontinuing dialysis or low volume dialysis can be resumed. Also, uh, the site of catheter can be changed. Second, outflow failure. The outflow tract may be blocked with fibrin or plugged with omentum. Uh, for this, we have to uh, remove, uh, with, uh, remove the out. Uh, block with flushings or we can use a heparinized dialysis fluid. Also, a PD catheter may be needed to reposition. In case of dehydration, it can be confirmed by, uh, it can be confirmed by uh, checking if there is excessive fluid loss or unadjusted fluid intake or we have to look for nausea and vomiting to rule out peritonitis. For this, uh, we have to adequate or uh, ensure adequate oral intake or and uh, infuse IV fluid and we can also decrease PD dextrose concentration so as to decrease ultrafiltrate. Uh, fourth complication is fluid overload. Uh, this can be evident in form of hypertension, edema, congestive cardiac failure, respiratory distress or pulmonary edema. Um, for this, we have to reassess dry weight. We have to decrease fluid or salt intake. We have to increase PD dextrose concentration for increasing ultrafiltration. If hyperglycemia is there, we have we can uh, decrease uh, dextrose percentage in the PD fluid and add insulin as mentioned earlier. In case of infection, we have to look for exit site infection, tunnel infection, and the peritonitis, which is the uh, most dreaded complication. Uh, for this, we have to look for fever, irritability, vomiting, diarrhea, or feed intolerance. For diagnosis of peritonitis, PD fluid should be sent for cytology, gram staining, and culture. Cloudy effluent fluid favors peritonitis. This can be diagnosed by effluent cell count of more than 100 WBC per ml with polymorphs more than 50%. Uh, treatment of management of peritonitis and bacterial peritonitis patients include two to three rapid PD exchanges followed by loading dose of intraperitoneal antibiotic, which is uh, mainly vancomycin 500 mg per liter of dialyzate fluid and septazidine 250 mg per liter of dialyzate fluid followed by maintenance dose of vancomycin, which is 30 mg per liter of dialyzate fluid and septazidine 125 mg per liter of dialyzate fluid, which is given for approximate two to three weeks. Heparin is also added and continuous dialysis 24 hour per day is done. But in case of fungal uh, peritonitis, if, uh, if it is confirmed candida species, PD catheter removal is necessary. Prophylactic antifungal therapy can also be given in form of oral nystatin or fluconazole. Uh, eosinophilic uh, peritonitis can be diagnosed with cloudy PD fluid with eosinophils more than 10% of total poly polymorphonuclear cells. Uh, it is a form of allergic reaction. Uh, so what is the treatment of eosinophilic peritonitis? Generally, wait and watch is done and also reduction of dextrose concentration and time of peritoneal dialysis enhances spontaneous resolution. Now, coming to the contraindications of peritoneal dialysis, absolute contraindications include omphalocele, gastrochysis, diaphragmatic hernia, severe pulmonary disease, and necrotizing enterocolitis. Relative contraindications include recent abdominal surgery, pleuroperitoneal communication, abdominal wall cellulitis, extreme hypercatabolic state, as well as severe gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, this is the neonatal peritoneal dialysis experience at our center from 2019 to 2021. Approx um, 
32 patients had acute kidney injury among them 21 patients uh, in uh, 21 uh, patients with dead peritoneal dialysis birth weight was in the range of 2200 plus minus 430 gram gestational age was in between 34 plus minus two weeks outbound and there were 15 outbound uh, and uh, 16 male age at dialysis after diagnosis of aki was eight plus minus three days so most common indication in 71.4 percent patient was rising creatinine and oliguria followed by this electrolytemia and fluid overload was seen in 99.5 percent of patients so mean complication in our uh, case was peritoneal Tonitis in 24% of pollution uh, people are uh, followed by obstruction in 19% of patients and then bleeding in 9.5% of patients. Uh, among all patients, 71% were discharged success, uh, successfully and 29% succumbed to death. So uh, take home messages, peritoneal dialysis is the most preferred modality of venal replacement therapy in a neonate, easily available in resource limited settings and is also technically simpler, appropriate in acute setting uh, as PD is not dependent on large numbers and well-trained staff. Uh, PD is more suitable for hemodynamically unstable neonates as well as practical for low birth weight neonates as they have difficult vascular access. But peritoneal dialysis is only effective if, if it is being carried out aseptically with fluid input output monitoring for effective dialysis. Thank you. We'll present it, Dr. Preeti, uh, with a good video illustration. So this is the topic which is uh, very relevant in context of intensive care setting where acute kidney injury is pretty common and uh, dialysis is something which is technically simpler and almost uh, anybody, any resident can do it. So it can be life-saving in several situations. So we would like to have comments and uh, queries if there are any. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's fine if there are no comments. We can close the session for today. Thank you, Dr. Pitti. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Uh, wait, Preeti. So, uh, somebody is asking, if the platelet count is less, what we have to do? So, Preeti, would, would you like to answer this question? Uh, yes, ma'am. If uh, platelet count is less, but there is no uh, bleeding, uh, we can continue peritoneal dialysis. And if platelet count is less than uh, 20,000, we can give platelet and then start uh, peritoneal dialysis. 20,000 uh, must be the lower limit. Yes, that's correct. So, uh, I would say that numbers are just a rough guide. Uh, patient criticality and the need for the uh, dialysis is, is more important and more relevant to decide about how we have to go. If the things are not very worse, then you can wait and transfuse the uh, baby first and then proceed with the uh, procedure. But if it is not so and the uh, acidosis is pretty worse and baby is in renal shutdown, then of course, on the flow of the platelet transfusion, one can go ahead with the procedure. Uh, so, second question is, do we need to add antibiotic to PD fluid? So, Preeti, you can answer this. No, uh, it's not uh, needed always to add antibiotic in PD fluid. Only if peritonitis is uh, there, then uh, we can add, we have to add antibiotics. So, that, that's correct. So, routinely, we should take all the due care of aseptic precaution. And there is no need of routine antibiotics in the PD fluid. Only if the, the peritonitis is diagnosed, as uh, it was mentioned in the slide, by cell cytology and gram staining and culture and sensitivity, then there are ISPN guidelines, which do suggest that which antibiotics can be given at, at uh, what dose and how it has to be developed for a longer period of time so that uh, absorption occurs there. So that the peritonitis can be taken care of with the help of antibiotics in the PD fluid. Otherwise, there is no routine indication for that. 
so uh, ne the next question is hyponatremia and aki so what should we do ahead with it any change in the pd fluid concentration sodium uh we can increase uh, dwell time so as to uh, cause more fluid la loss for hyponatremia uh no change in uh, concentration of sodium is required exactly so pd fluid uh, like the hyponatremia if it is there along with the aki which is quite obvious that in aki dilutional hyponatremia occurs because of the fluid retention in the body so if you are dialysis is doing fine adequately your extra fluid in the uh, body would be taken care and that's why your sodium would be corrected so uh, routinely there should not be any need of pd fluid alteration of the sodium concentration so uh, another question is what steps can be taken for prevention of peritonitis so again it is uh, to re emphasize that aseptic non test technique whenever the handling of the uh, pd sites so flow system should be there uh, no one should fiddle with the connection sites very uh, frequently if uh, if required then only it should be handled proper health care should be done pd sterile fluid pd fluid should be used and uh, in the newborns as the uh, amount is lesser for, for the per cycle time so a measured volume drip sheet can be uh, taken to uh, do the uh, cycles rather than connecting it directly to the bag so all the due precautions should be taken to uh, maintain asepsis as much as possible so the next question is the what is the lowest gestation and weight you guys have done in the pd so in our center we have done uh, the pd in the lowest we have done in so many babies but um, i would say we have done even in the 26 weeker but uh, uh, i would like to count on the successful uh, pd so in 28 weeker 1 kg baby it was successful otherwise in whatever indication we have gone through so the mortality is pretty high when you the need for the replenishment replacement is there so uh, the our youngest survivor with the pd was 28 weeker 1 kg next is what is uh, in a bilateral hydronephrosis baby with anuria with severe metabolic acidosis site be corrected with pd till when to continue cycle after so uh, obviously um, in this uh, like the question we has been asked that in bilateral hydronephrosis pyonephrosis along with the anuria with severe, severe metabolic acidosis and uh, which responded slightly to pd so how to titrate about the cycles and pc and drainage so i would like to suggest that in such cases one has to uh, one has to hit the cause we need to know that where is the obstruction first obviously pyonephrosis things are uh, difficult we you need to uh, manipulate your catheters we you need to check the drainage you have to do ultrasound serially that whether the pus is getting drained simultaneously antibiotics are working or not in such kind of cases uh, it is not uh, routinely required that you go ahead with uh, cycles continuously for every hour sometimes 8 uh, hours a day pd would be sufficient enough to take care of slight derangements and uh, in that way you can handle the things but obviously the cause and the treatment of cause is most important that would guide that how the vp is progressing so when to stop pd obviously the indication for which it was uh, started then we have to stop like if you have done it for the metabolic acidosis so if your acidosis is corrected if you have done it for the oliguria your oliguria has been corrected uh, obviously uh, for the uh, then you have the next simultaneous question is how much time we have to wait to remove pd catheter so preeti would you like to answer for this uh, we have to uh, yes. in case in case we have used uh, it for acute condition and we have used stip catheter then we can use it for 48 to 72 hours uh, maximum uh, we have used till 7 uh, days if there is no sign of uh, peritonitis but it should not be beyond with, with after uh, 72 to uh, 4 72 hours to 4 uh, days but in case uh, we have uh, we are